Yeah, what I want to say here is uh, basically uh, two things. First, I would like to explain what uh, Bologna de Declaration is, what does it mean and what were their impacts. And basically what I want to also to explain is that uh, Bologna Declaration declared some different things that it actually uh, come out. So this is something that I would like to explain and uh, explain in, in a few words. And then <clears throat> we, because of Bologna Declaration or better because of Bologna process as it is uh, known, uh, we have changed our programs and I think nobody is really satisfied with them. So we are planning to change those uh, study programs and here I will uh, show you some ideas what we would like to, uh, to do with that. <clears throat> so Bologna Declaration is not just one thing. Uh, Bologna Declaration is uh, this many ministerial conferences as it is written here. It all started in Lisbon with the uh, uh, publishing a convention of recognition of qualification uh, concerning higher education in, 90, in 1997. It is, uh, uh, it is, I believe, the document that says it all uh, about uh, recognition, about credit system, about uh, uh, studies. And then uh, four big nations, uh, I believe it uh, Germany, United Kingdom, France and Italy, uh, signed Sorbonne uh, jo uh, Joint Declaration in 1908, where they established the basics of, uh, uh, of all Bologna, uh, Bologna process. And then this big, big uh, bank happened in Bologna in 1999, uh, where uh, the number of ministers from Europe uh, signed this Bologna Declaration. Afterward, afterward, about every two years, there were some conference, uh, minister conferences where some other things were adopted. And it's not ended, as you can see. The last year it was a Paris uh, ministerial conference, and in next year it will be in Rome. So, <coughs> uh, in Sorbonne Joint Declaration, the one that these four uh, big countries uh, signed, is uh, they first stated that uh, the higher education should be open, that uh, should uh, respect the diversity and should uh, uh, enable uh, international recognition. That means that if somebody finished his or her studies in, uh, in Germany can uh, use this diploma in other countries as well, other European countries. It also uh, stated something, uh, the system of cycles, uh, the, the first uh, cycle and the second cycle, uh, the, but, but it was not called as it is now, bachelor, master's, doctoral. It is, was called undergraduate and graduate. And this is something very similar as we had at that time in Europe. Uh, so the, the first cycle was basically uh, uh, three, four, or five years of uh, bachelor. And then we had uh, a master's or doctoral uh, graduate studies. Uh, and it can be, could, could be short or longer, uh, uh, longer uh, degree. And it was also possible to transfer from master to doctoral at that time. And the first time this uh, credit, European credit transfer system, as it is now known, ECTS, uh, it was also established. Uh, and it was, at that time, it was meant that uh, everybody can enter from everywhere if he had uh, credential and that should be very easy to, uh, to do. Then the next year, um, basically, uh, Bologna Declaration was the repetition of Sorbonne Declaration. All, everything was, uh, was pr more or less the same, with the exception that now 29 uh, European countries signed it. Uh, and uh, as you can see, uh, we have now ECTS system, two main cycles, not three as it is now. Uh, and uh, the first one is the lasting of minimum of three years, and there were no up upper limit so we could easily have uh, six years uh, uh, first cycle and the second cycle is uh, for masters and doctoral degree and mobility and uh, and also a very important thing here the quality assurance so uh, it, at that time it was sought to uh, to establish a system of quality assurance of higher uh, higher education over all Europe in in Prague uh, uh, conferences, the, the, some new countries joined, so there were 32 at that time. Um, still, they were talking about two main cycles as before, but uh, this is the first time that some differences between countries were uh, observed. 
And so maybe this was the point where it was shifted to the direction as it is now. Uh, everything else is, uh, uh, was more or less in the, in the line of the uh, Bologna, Bologna Declaration with some additional things. Uh, first, uh, a lifelong, lifelong learning, something that it was, I believe, always there, but we never used this word. It was always uh, working people were, were studying all, all, all their lives all their working lives, so that it was not, not, nothing really new, but it was, it was spelled out in a way. And uh, involvement of uh, universities, other higher education uh, uh, institutes, institutions and students uh, were also welcomed uh, officially. It was before similar, but now it was uh, put out. <clears throat> in 2003, this is uh, four years after Bologna, we have 33 countries, still two main uh, uh, cycles, uh, but uh, here you, we can see that there is a, a, a big change. We, there is, an, in the second cycle, it was stated the second cycle degree should give access to doctoral studies. In a way, this is already a change to toward three cycles. It, we, uh, we did not spell it out at that point, but uh, we have the first two cycles completed in order to start uh, doctoral studies. This was, this was a big change, big change that uh, was never written in Bologna, Bologna Declaration. And uh, uh, so, uh, and something uh, also important was uh, spelled out that uh, higher education and research area should be two interchanging pillars of our system and that one cannot work without the other. This is also something that worked years and years, decades before, but it was never, it, it was not uh, uh, set in that way. <coughs> in the, uh, in the 2005, uh, we have a precipitation of 35 countries, and here in Bergen Communique, it was first clearly stated that we have three cycle systems, not two cycles anymore, bachelor, master's, doctors, and uh, basic, basically uh, it was uh, understood by most countries that we have a system of three years bachelor, two years master, or four years bachelor, one year master's, and three to four years doctoral studies. It was, uh, uh, and it was understood by, I believe, too rigidly by most of European countries, and that's why we changed our programs according to this form uh, with too much haste, I would say. And uh, now the, uh, some additional words as uh, social dimension so that the study should be available for everybody and the mobility of students and uh, professors. And uh, here a very important, uh, uh, very important uh, document was uh, adopted. This was uh, the standards and guidelines for quality assurance in the European uh, higher education area as short, uh, short ES, ESG. And uh, here it's something very strange that I was really surprised to see when I, when I was looking at that at that time. Uh, this ESG, as uh, they were published in 2005, they were basically a result of a research project. And it was clearly stated in preamble of this document that it's not for use, it is just a research, research uh, uh, product. Nevertheless, this uh, ESG were used for 10 years as a, a main document for quality assurance in higher education. Quite peculiar. In, uh, in the next uh, years, they, they were uh, reviewing the, the progress of the, uh, this Bologna, Bologna process, uh, mostly as it is uh, usually so in those ministerial conferences, they were all, all, uh, all applauding the, uh, the progress. They were happy with, with most of the things. Uh, the, some new words come uh, come to uh, no come to uh, out as a qualification frameworks, something that we had to do to for preparing our uh, uh, study programs, but now we uh, we set up uh, a more holistic uh, uh, qualification frameworks for some uh, uh, for di for different uh, subjects or for different areas. And uh, so, and um, okay, there is some other things that are 
besides those. In 2009, uh, still 45 countries uh, every year, a few more, a review of the progress and the same thing as, uh, as said before. Now here some new things were uh, student-centered learning. This is again a very nice word, uh, a lot of talk about, about it, but I'm pretty sure that if a teacher was good in uh, 1950s, uh, he already had student-centered uh, centered learning. Um, and again, education and research and innovation should be hand in hand. And uh, this is some, something which I actually like uh, here in, in this Levin uh, communique, is this uh, uh, data collection and multidimensional uh, transparency tools. What does it mean? This means that uh, we don't really... Uh, uh, you, you know, universities are compared between each other uh, through some... Uh, uh, through some, well, it's not really competition, like uh, uh, China's, uh, the uh, Shanghai, Shanghai uh, um, what is the name, uh, well, uh, it's, uh, forgot. Uh, some? Is it Sumai? Uh, yes, yeah, well, it's, it, the, the, when the, Shang, I, I forgot the name, ranking, okay, Shanghai University ranking, uh, and there are a number of other, of other rankings, and there is always some university at the, at the top, as maybe Harvard University or MIT or so on. And uh, it's very difficult to compare university as it is Harvard or MIT to university as it is University of Ljubljana or any other university in other countries. Uh, the, uh, the parameters that are included in those rankings are very different, um, and it's uh, sometimes, sometimes difficult to compare. But with these multidimensional transparency tools, uh, they are really comparing the universities uh, according to some specific parameters that somebody is interested to. And so everybody can make its own ranking and it puts different weights to the things that uh, for him is more or less important. So this is something that I really like compared to <coughs> the ranking that are in use uh, right now. <coughs> now in Vienna, I'm not really sure if I I read this well in this uh, communique, but I believe that in this communique I, I have first started that there are some doubts in what was in, done in in uh, Bologna process. That there are some things, some protests, that in maybe there should be some changes in, in higher education in Europe. In Europe. <clears throat> and uh, here in 2000, 2012, uh, it's... Uh, I, I'm checking here, and it's not really much new about it. Uh, uh, something that it's, uh, it is emphasized here, and since it was emphasized in the ministerial uh, conference, it, uh, it was then adopted also in, in practice and uh, through the funding. They were encouraging joint programs and degrees so between the uh, different universities internationally. And so from that point on, we have more incentives to, to build uh, joint uh, programs uh, and there are some good uh, stories about uh, about that in Europe, that uh, uh, pr study programs that involve many universities and that are actually very successful. Uh, <clears throat> there are, uh, in the last year, every two years, there is a, 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 a forum of quality assurance in higher edu education with uh, cooperation of these four uh, group of uh, 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 representative of higher education. And again, student center learning and uh, widening access, all this stuff that is actually always here, but it was maybe didn't have the name as they have now. In the 2015, there was a, a ministerial conference in Yerevan. And uh, uh, here, it, there are some very important documents were adopted. First was the revised ESG. Finally, we got rid of the... Uh, research project report uh, and they were really proper uh, guidelines and standards. Uh, these standards are shorter, are more concise and really direct uh, uh, agencies and universities how to perform the, the quality assurance and quality enhancement. Then uh, <clears throat> very important is also uh, the ECTS uh, user guide. Here it is well explained what credit means. Uh, what, what one credit means, and it, would, it also explains <clears throat> what does it mean, the grade. 
because in, in, in Europe uh, we, we have traditionally very different uh, system of grading, of student grading, and this, uh, uh, this guide shows us how to compare those grade, grades between uh, different systems. Uh, and it's basically always based on ranking. It, uh, you, you cannot really compare absolute, absolute values of, of the grades. Uh, <clears throat> last year, there was a, a conference in, in Paris. Um, the, again, the report was uh, given a, a positive re value. The, the, it was the Bologna process was uh, estimated as successful. Uh, there were uh, two important additional points anyway. One is the short cycle qualification. In the last uh, 10 years, I would say, there are uh, more and more uh, short programs available. Uh, there are some of them are MOOCs, really short programs, uh, and some a little longer. The, some are lifelong, some are in, uh, including in the, into the first or second cycle. But anyway, um, as far as it is now, uh, the recognition of those short uh, cycle uh, uh, courses is difficult, and this is now on one step toward that direction that that one could get the uh, um, credits from different short uh, short courses. And <clears throat> also, um, diploma supplement, as you know, this was, this was actually already from the beginning of Bologna process. Uh, in order to understand what student learned, what are the, his knowledge or her knowledge and skills, uh, every diploma, every uh, graduate has to get a diploma and also a diploma supplement. And in diploma supplement, there is basically all information about the, uh, uh, about the students, about the study that uh, he or she uh, finished. And uh, here is the uh, a proposal of a unified form, uh, is in a way as a Europass for a CV, uh, a uniform form for a diploma supplement. And that would include uh, many things, also the ranking of the grades uh, of the, uh, of the uh, students. So <clears throat> if I summarize all this, what I was talking for the last uh, five or ten minutes, uh, it uh, started in Bologna in 1999, the declaration was signed. Uh, it is basically a start of a process that uh, is not finished and probably never will be. Uh, I would say that there were some important shifts. Uh, for me, it's the, one of the biggest uh, shifts were from the two-cycle system as at the beginning uh, shift to a three-cycle system, and from the very uh, uh, loose system to a very rigid system of three plus two plus three or, or something like that. So this was something that was certainly not contributing to the quality of uh, our higher education. And uh, <clears throat> also, uh, in those years, there were some new words that become uh, uh, popular, like uh, student center learning, lifelong learning, uh, mobility, um, the uh, research, innovation, study, uh, education, paradigm, and so on. And uh, But those are all words that were not at the beginning in Bologna process in words, but they were also always here. So this, I, I don't believe that uh, in 30 years ago, when we did not speak about Bologna process, we did not think of how to teach our students as best as we could, and that is as, as it is now. Now, a <clears throat> few words of what we have done in, in Slovenia. Uh, Bologna reform was fully adopted about 10 years ago, uh, and uh, it was mostly to 3 plus 2 system. We have two or three, I believe mean, at our university, we have three faculties that adopted FAR plus one system, and there were some uh, uh, faculties that adopted uh, uniform master's programs, those that were regulated, uh, like medicine, pharmacy, veterinary, uh, architecture, and a few more, uh, like theology and uh, interesting uh, educational mathematics. Uh, so, um, I would say that uh, it is not really clear why architecture is uh, regulated uh, and uh, civil engineering is not. It's both, they're both important for uh, building, uh, designing uh, structures, and this is very important for human lives. 
So uh, it is uh, as important as uh, in this case of medicine and, uh, uh, and pharmacy. And in civil engineering, we adopted a system of three plus two. We know that some at the time I was a young professor, I was very well opposing that, but uh, nobody really listened to me. Uh, and uh, at that time, I was talking to different professors at, uh, in Europe that adopted three plus two system before, and nobody was really happy with that. I remember one professor from Bari, I was asking him uh, if the three years graduates are um, uh, employable, that if they got employment, and he replied, I really don't know. Nobody stops there, everybody's going to the second cycle. Uh, so, um, and we have different doubts about that at the beginning, and the, but we still, we, we went through it, and now after several years, we, uh, we are seeing the problems that we could predict, and uh, we are trying to, to correct that, if possible. So, <clears throat> first I have to be quite critical to what uh, civil engineers uh, done in terms in, at our university. We have, we, before that, we have a four years uh, bachelor uh, study. Uh, that was four years of lectures and exams, and then we have a half year additionally for diploma. Uh, now we have changed that to three years, and inside these three years we have uh, maybe a month or so for a first diploma, and then we have two additional years, and in, in, inside these two additional years we have a month or two for diploma. So basically we are more or less at the same level. Also, practical work was before uh, separate and now this practical work now we we have inside this three and a half, three plus two years and in order to try to teach uh, our students to be a full uh, full label uh, engineers uh, we uh, we shifted some some subject we shifted some um, subject that were taught in the fourth year to that practical subject we shifted into the third year and so what we have to do we shifted some theoretical subject into the second level. And uh, so uh, now we are teaching uh, some theoretical subject in the first or second year of uh, uh, second cycle. Uh, and this is the theoretical uh, back background for the, the subject that were already taught in the first year. So uh, this is something that is upside down and it does not really work uh, well. Um, <clears throat> and also, uh, we were all, always talking about about mobility. That now with the system of three plus two, the people can can shift from program to program. So we have mechanical engineers. He decides to be civil engineers. He simply goes to the second cycle of civil engineers and vice versa. Or uh, somebody goes from uh, civil engineers to economy, or from physics to civil engineering, or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, the truth is that basically nobody really shifts from one one uh, program to another. It's very very few. Uh, are doing that, and so this is not something that uh, we should uh, put the system on. And uh, <clears throat> this is this is this is this we can observe. And uh, as we see now, the students are not are not satisfied. What they say is that the second cycle they don't give much news. They they are basically a lot of repetition of the first cycle, because in the first cycle we taught students something that they need to know, but because we didn't have time, we did that quickly. And now in the second second cycle, we did that a little bit slower, uh, more thoroughly. And still, it is not it is not something that uh, one would uh, one would like. And teachers are not satisfied as well. Why should we be? Uh, it's uh, uh, this is uh, uh, we don't like to teach. Uh, students things that they, I, we know that they cannot really uh, follow because it's too quickly for them. And at the end, we end up with the students in the second cycle that uh, uh, we had to repeat a few things in order because you got something, somebody from, from, from the background that is different. So we are a little bit confused, I would say. And uh, I'm pretty sure that the system as it is now uh, doesn't give students uh, uh, what it could give and what it should. <clears throat> now, uh, there are some uh, 
we, we started to to change uh, to to make this big change from this system three plus two to a single cycle study in civil engineering. And first time, first thing what we do, what we did, is uh, let's put some pluses and some minuses. And uh, in the first meeting that we had, I put some of those pluses on the blackboard and I put some minuses and then I tried to uh, raise a question to, from, the, uh, from the people present there. Uh, let's put every plus, every minus that, that we, can we can see and what happened is that uh, nobody put any additional minus there, but some of the minuses were shifted to pluses. So it's, it was a really a strange meeting. And um, so uh, what are the reasons that we think that single cycle uh, study of civil engineering is, is necessary? First of all, the Chamber of, uh, uh, the Chamber of Engineers require and the, and the law actually, Slovenian law requires 300 credits to obtain the status of certified engineer. So the incentive for students is to finish the five years study in order to be able to get the uh, license of certified engineer. So basically, we already have a requirement for five years study for those who want to be certified engineers and most of our students want to become that. And if we have a system of three plus two with diploma in, 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 in between, it's hard to, to distribute the, the subject in uh, a logical, uh, uh, logical system, logical uh, uh, way. So uh, this is something that would be easier when we have a uh, uh, single cycle uniform master's uh, study. And, uh, there is the question, why should one who, uh, who would like to become uh, an engineer write uh, two diploma theses, uh, one for the first cycle and one for the second cycle? So uh, he should write a number of seminars, that's not a problem, but uh, these two, two, two times finishing the, uh, the studies, uh, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's not logical. Uh, and as it is now, I will show you some evidence of that. Uh, most of our students are continuing uh, from the first cycle to the second one. And uh, last but not least, we have a support of students, of student organization, and we have a support of Slovenian Chambers of Engineers. And we also have a formal and informal support of companies that employ uh, civil engineers. Some evidence that what I was talking about before is, is true. In, uh, in the last five years, 93% of graduates who finished in four years, the three year study, so this is the good students, those who finished in three years plus one year, um, they, uh, they 93% to, they continue in our study of civil engineering in the second cycle. And even of those who are less able or less, I don't know what, that they need a longer time to, uh, to study this first cycle, 65% of those are continue, continuing on the second cycle of civil engineers. We, in the last few, uh, few years, we are doing a, study, a, a survey among freshmen, and we just ask them, what would you do if there is a uniform uh, master study instead of the one system that is there? And only about 15% said that they would go elsewhere, that they don't like to the system. Most of them are well, uh, well uh, prepared and a number of them uh, uh, told us that they would even rather come here than, than uh, if, if you had uh, the master, master uniform, uniform master. Uh, we also perform uh, in 2013 a student survey overall, uh, overall University of Ljubljana and uh, about 80% of graduates of all University of Ljubljana remain at the same faculty from the first to second cycle. So this shifts between the programs is not really evident. And uh, among those 20% that they not, don't continue on the same faculty, most of them, they don't continue anywhere. So it's not that they, they go elsewhere. And uh, in, the, in the same study, the Faculty of Civil and Geodetic Engineering, uh, about half of the students uh, told us that uh, second cycle is not an upgrade from the first cycle, so that it's more or less the repetition, which is some, a, a scary data. And then a question, why not single cycle? That's a very short, short list. 
maybe you have some more ideas what should be written here and I will be uh, happy to uh, to add that uh, well first one thing that is usually said that nobody has it nobody had uh, nobody has civil engineer as a, uh, a single cycle study it is not true it's not very common it's rare but it's not true there's n there's no such courses I uh, last year I was in Saint Etienne and I I met two professors from two different universities from Saint Etienne and from uh, northern Sweden and they both have uh, single cycle study of civil engineers then I checked uh, in the tech Politecnico di Milano they have a unified study of architecture and, and, and civil engineering a kind of uh, mixed mixed program uh, between architecture and construction engineering and it's also a single cycle and it should be like that I, I, I really don't see why why not and there may be a problem of mobili mobility mobility not in the sense of visiting students uh, between countries but mobility from one study to another this is a, a true problem it is actually a true problem only to go out of this program it is as it is now in our uh, law in Slovenia law you cannot get the second cycle if you don't finish the first one and so if you finish the three years of unified cycle you have not finished the first cycle and so you cannot transfer to a second cycle as well but you can easily transfer from L anywhere else after the finishing uh, first cycle to the fourth year of, of this study so it's, it is actually one-way mobility it is good for our 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 program actually <clears throat> And uh, what, is, what is our plan? We have already started, as you could imagine, uh, uh, to build a program like that. We have a number of meetings. We are trying to prepare uh, a program. Uh, first, we have to do it at the faculty level. We have to talk to all professors and prepare a, a really coherent uh, program. And then we need uh, evaluation and confirmation at the university level and evaluation and uh, accreditation at uh, our agency for quality assurance of higher education. So uh, with this, I thank you for attention and I had uh, explained what I wanted to say about Bologna process in Slovenia. Okay, thank, thank you, Goran, for a very <laughs> insightful presentation.